Hello and welcome to a new episode of Bengal Magazine. My name is Jeff Ventura, sitting in for Tom Kohler this week. On today's show, we're going to talk football in our first segment. A pair of defensive captains, Shaq Frederick and Dez Howard. In the second segment, we're going to meet our new swimming and diving head coach, Nick Stone. He's bringing along a sophomore swimmer, Jake Brigham. In our final segment, we're going to talk men's soccer with head coach Mark Howlett and junior transfer and scoring phenom Luke Pavone. After a short break, we're going to talk football with Shaq Frederick and Des Howard. Welcome back to Bengal Magazine. Weather shifting to football weather outside. We're talking football inside with a pair of defensive standouts and team captains. Des Howard, Shaq Frederick, guys, welcome to the show. Three and two at the halfway point of the season. Uh, a, a good start. We beat Otterbein in the opener 29 nothing, And then starting quarterback gets injured and, and kind of found our way a little bit. And now two more victories really fueled by the defense. Des, start with you. Talk about the, the role the defense has played, really an enhanced role in, in the team's success this year. Well, um, Jeff, uh, coming off of those two losses, uh, we just felt as a defense that, uh, you know, just coming in, we always just felt like we were a dominant defense and we were returning pretty much all our starters except one at um, cornerback and, -tack or, and at D-tackle, so two. But um, we just felt really confident and we just came in with a swagger that, you know, it's on us now, you know, and without Kyle, um, so it's up to us to step up, and Erdo has stepped up as well, moving the ball, but as far as the last two weeks, we've always put that on our defense. Like, we put more pressure on ourselves to come out there and um, do what we do and have a swagger like we had in camp. Jack, leading the team in tackles again for the second year in a row, well over 100 tackles last year and, and on pace to be there again this year. Talk about from the linebacker position, uh, what are you seeing different or the same with this defense this year uh, from, from last year's team? I mean, this year we're more mature. <clears throat> it's a linebacker group, it's a D-line, um, D-backs. Everyone's more mature now, and our team is starting to step up. So everyone's getting older, everyone's bigger, stronger. So, you know, we just have to play our part, do what we have to do, just keep on being on the road. A very senior-laden group, as you mentioned, as uh, a lot of experience, a lot of speed. Um, with you guys causing havoc up front, the defense lived seem, seemingly on, on big plays and takeaways. 31 turnovers forced last year, led the umpire eight, already 12 this season. Um, I assume that's, that starts with you guys up front. Talk about the defensive philosophy a little bit. I know you guys love to go over to the sideline and, and bang that gong after a turnover, but talk about how it starts up, up front with you guys. Well, it all starts, you know, on, on Tuesdays when we start the tackling circuit. You know, that's how we approach it, you know, our tackling. And then on Wednesdays we do our um, – Turnover, turnover circuit. So basically, we're doing our bat ball drills, our ripping drills, and all of that. So everything you see on the Saturdays, the takeaways, and things of that nature, they come from that. And you know, just hustling to the ball. You know, just pure hustle. You know, coach always talks about, um, you know, talent is one thing, but you can control one thing: it's hustle and effort. And that's what you know. What you see, like ten black shirts on the ball every play, and that's what we bring to the table. And that's how we create those turnovers. Shake, talk about this style. It's got to be a, a fun way to, to, to play defense um, with, with guys flying around the field. I mean, when you're playing together with your brothers and just flying around and going at your full potential, it has to be fun. Like, we all, we all have, a, like, a brotherhood that we can't break. Like, it's an unbreakable bond. So with us playing for each other all the time, it's like you just get to fly around and do what we love to do, play football. A breakthrough for the team last season, 8-3, first postseason appearance since 2000, a, 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 convincing victory in the ECAC Bowl. Uh, how did that change expectations? I'll start with you, Des, coming into this season. And, and as we faced some adversity early in the year, I, I would assume that that helped to have that in your back pocket to, to help pull you through the tough times and really right the ship now. Yeah, um, coming up that 8-3 and three season, to be honest with you, I, I know all of us in the locker room were pretty disappointed at it, even though everybody else thinks it was an accomplishment to us. It was a letdown because we wanted to be um, in the playoffs and we knew we should have been there. and. You know, coming off those two losses, we just knew we just we're not gonna, we can't lose another game. We don't want to lose another game because we don't want to have the same feeling that we had last year, underachieving, and we want and that's where we want to be in the playoffs. So we just took that approach and we running with it, and we just taking it game by game. And our motto right now was win today, and we got to win each and every day in order to win on Saturdays. 
since then a 30 to 7 victory over St. John Fisher where they scored a touchdown with 47 seconds left and a number of you guys probably weren't even on the field at that time mm -hmm. and, and then last week against previously unbeaten Cortland uh, down 12 at halftime shut them out in the second half one of their touchdowns was also an interception so yeah. that, that wasn't yeah. on, on you either um, talk about the goals moving forward we have one non-conference game this Saturday at home against Finlandia and then four big conference games to close out the regular season what are your expectations and what are your goals for the rest of the season? <clears throat> Our goal for the rest of the season and expectations are just to win out. It's the only thing we can do. Unfortunately, our record has been messed up at the beginning, but our plan right now is to mess up everyone else's record. So that's our goal from now on and just to win today, like he said. <clears throat> so in practice every day, game day, we just got to come out hard. I mean, the unique thing about the Empire Eight this year is everybody's already got a loss. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's still really a wide open conference. Um, talk about the final four games and, and what you expect to, to match up against? Well, you know, I've watched all of them play, and uh, Utica is a tough team. Brockport's a tough team. They both went to overtime, I think, last week. Ithaca is a tough team. Um, then we close out with Brockport, one of our rivals. So it's not going to be easy by any means, but we're prepared, and we're going to just, like I said before, we're going to win today, and we got the talent, and we got, you know, the swagger and the maturity to do it. So uh, a, gr a great start to the season, and the defense especially is, is doing a terrific job. Three more home games at Courier Field, including this Saturday, October 17th, a noon kickoff against Finlandia, guys. Good luck in that game, and best of luck the rest of the season. Thanks for joining us. We're going to take a short break, and when we return, we're going to meet swimming and diving coach Nick Stone. I want to acknowledge our Tim Hortons Buffalo State Athlete of the Week for this week, women's soccer player Brianna Knight. Sophomore midfielder and criminal justice major scored a pair of goals and a 3-0 week. As the Bengals extended their winning streak to a school record nine games, Knight netted the only goal in a 1-0 win over Allegheny. She helped limit Cortland to just four shots on goal in another 1-0 victory and then scored her third goal of the season in a 3-2 victory at Oswego on Saturday. Brianna Knight is your Tim Hortons Buffalo State Athlete of the Week. In our second segment, we're joined by first-year head swimming and diving coach Nick Stone and a sophomore from Binghamton, Jake Brigham. Gentlemen, welcome to the show. Nick, take a moment to kind of introduce introduce yourself to our viewers. You came on mm -hmm. board in, in the summertime and mm -hmm. your first year, a couple weeks of practice under your belt now. Um, but tell us a little bit about your background in swimming. Yeah, I grew up in Michigan, grew up, swam in clubs around Ann Arbor area um, since basically could swim uh, at like four years old. And then went on to Hope College where I swam for four years, um, qualified for nationals there. Um, went to Ithaca College for my master's in sports psych where I coached with both the men's and women's team, um, taking both teams to national appearances on both, uh, both sides. Uh, and I just wrapped up three year stint at Williams College uh, where I was the assistant for two years and then took over the program my last year. Um, and through my time there, I've coached over 25 All-Americans, and last year our men's and women's team both finished third at Nationals. So. An impressive resume for sure, a number of national appearances, as you mm -hmm. mentioned. Uh, Jake Brigham, a sophomore at Buffalo State, swam for the Bengals last year, uh, second year, second coach, uh, a very tight-knit group of, of returning swimmers. Talk about how the transition has gone so far and, and the first couple weeks of practice under your belt, maybe some of the positives that you've seen. Um, like we've been all transitioning very well with the new coach and everything. We're all very close and he's done a really good job at bringing us together through things, doing team lifting. Um, in the mornings we do like themes like on once a week and we're just, he's bringing us all together even closer than what we were before last year and he's just really doing a good job at that. Well, um, well happy to see everybody back and, and the swimmers seem to be working very hard early mm -hmm. in the year. Uh, first meet at the end of this month. Uh, October 31st, the home meet. Talk about your early season goals, and, and, and we'll talk about long-term long goals a little bit later, but what are you trying to accomplish in, in these first few weeks of practice? Uh, right now, it's really building the base. Uh, the swimmers did a pretty good job with preseason, getting in the water, lifting. They did really well with that, uh, but now it's getting that aerobic base so that when we do start meets and going fast, we can we have that background. So the first few meets are going to be kind of shaking the rust off the joints and getting ready to race fast. We do that in practice every once in a while. 
uh, but it's also different at meets. So just kind of seeing where they are. This will be my first time watching them in a race setting as well. So kind of see how they approach their races compared to practice and kind of formulate that to kind of structure the rest of the season. So. Jake, we, we talked off camera a little bit. Listed as a freestyler and backstroker, uh, scored last year 12th in the 400 IM at SUNYX. Um, first of all, is that where you expected to be? Um, or, or did you exceed expectations? Um, not at all. I did not expect to place 12th, maybe like up there a little bit, but my roommate's also an IMer, and he was going fast in the all season, and I did not expect to go a little bit farther than him. And it was just, it was a nice experience to be so, able to. So the, the 400 IM, for those yeah. who don't know, individual medley, it's all four strokes in, in one race, an extremely grueling race. Uh, is this your specialty by, by choice? Are you? Is Coach making you do it, or how, how did you find your way to, to that as your, as your specialty event? Um, they just kind of saw it in practice and realized that like I could go a little bit further with it, and they placed me into it, and things kind of fell in place there. I wouldn't have exactly picked it, like you said. It is a little bit more of an extensive swim, but it is very thrilling to be able to know that you have something that you can do. Talk about the, the season goals and, and highlight the roster a little mm -hmm. bit. Uh, beyond Jake, who scored as a freshman, I'm sure you're expecting even bigger things out of him mm -hmm. this year. Who else should, should fans be, be watching for in, in the Black and Orange this year? Yeah, um, big pieces. Connor Mergler won both the 50 and 100 freestyles last year at SUNY uh, Qualified, got B cuts in the, for nationals, but didn't get selected to go. I know that's on his list to do, so I'm excited for that. Allison Kolinsky on the women's side has been doing some really good stuff in practice already. Um, had a great season last year and looking to continue that. And to be honest, I feel like the whole roster, there's a lot of improvement even just in the first three weeks. And I'm really excited to see how everybody does, especially with the newcomers and things like that. So. Jake, before we finish, we got about a minute left. Just talk about your personal goals and, and where you're aspiring to be come, come February. It's a very different season. We've talked about it before with, with the swim program. The regular season is kind of a year-long training process mm -hmm. for SUNYAC. So, so when you eye the end of the season, where do you hope to be this year? Um, I hope to be a little bit place higher in the 400 individual medley. I want to maybe get up there in 10th, a little bit higher than that. Um, I want to, we're working on the 500 right now. I had a great drop last year. I want to maybe drop that a little bit more this year, go a little bit faster. And it's hard, like you said, it's hard to project that, but it's, you got to think about every day, like in the water and really push yourself to that end goal. Well, great to have you guys on the show early in the season. I'm sure we'll visit with you again mm -hmm. uh, as, as the meets begin and we'll, we'll check and see what, what the progress is and, and how they are as racers, as, as, as you'd like to see. Uh, best of luck when you do start the season on Halloween, October 31st at Kissinger Pool. Uh, we'll take a short break and when we return, we're going to talk men's soccer with head coach Mark Howlett. I love being a student athlete here. I feel like you're a role model to the school because everyone looks up at you. You're an athlete and you're a student at the same time. Hello and welcome to Bengal Update. I'm Rebecca Coleman here with the recap of news and a look at the upcoming events surrounding Buffalo State Athletics. Women's soccer has set a new school record with a nine game winning streak and is 5-0 in the SUNYAC for the first time in the program's history. Over the weekend, the Bengals hit the road and defeated Cortland 1-0. The following day, the Bengals held on for a 3-2 victory at Oswego. Buffalo State currently leads the SUNYAC in goals, tallying 24 total and averaging 1.8 per game. Junior Melissa Smith continues to pace the Bengals' offense and is first in the conference for shots and assists per game. Sophomore Brianna Knight has also become an offensive threat for the Bengals. She was named both Buffalo State and SUNYAC Player of the Week this week. Buffalo State returns to Coyer Field for its final homestand this weekend. The Bengals take on Potsdam on Friday at 3 p.m. and then Plattsburgh on Saturday at 4 p.m. Men's soccer went 1-1 one one on Coyer Field over the weekend. On Friday, the Bengals fell to Cortland 2-0, but bounced back for a 2-1 win over Oswego on Saturday. Junior Luke Pavone tallied both goals in the win over the Lakers, including one on a penalty kick to give the Bengals the win. Pavone continues to lead the Buffalo State offense with 23 points off 10 goals and 3 assists. Buffalo State will make its final road trip of the regular season next weekend when it travels to North Country to face Potsdam and Plattsburgh on Friday and Saturday, respectively. 
After falling to Alfred and Morrisville in back-to-back -back games, football has bounced back and won two big conference games. A campus-wide power outage just before kickoff on homecoming on October 3rd could not slow the Bengals down as Buffalo State raced out to a 23-0 halftime lead and cruised to a 30-7 victory over visiting St. John Fisher. The Bengals then followed up their homecoming performance with a 29-21 win over number 18 Cortland this past Saturday. Buffalo State managed to shut out top-ranked Cortland in the second half and erased a 12-point halftime deficit to earn the win. Prior to playing the Bengals, Cortland had averaged 43.2 points per game through its first five games, but the Buffalo State defense limited the Red Dragons to just 21 points. Against Cortland, converted running back Joe Oka had a breakout game at wide receiver with nine catches for 93 yards and a touchdown. John Alessandra and Shaq Frederick led the defense with nine tackles each. Buffalo State will host Finlandia next Saturday for a non-conference matchup at noon on Coyer Field. Men's and women's cross country got a sneak peek at the course at Letchworth State Park that will host next month's NCAA Atlantic Regional. On the men's side, the Bengals finished 33rd of 38 teams. Austin Becker was the top Bengal, finishing 277th out of 534. For the women, freshman Ronnie Quadruple led the Bengals to a 26th place finish overall. Quadruple completed the trek in 136th place with a time of 24 minutes and 10 seconds. After a week off, the Bengals traveled to Ohio for the Oberlin Interregional Rumble on October 17th. Women's volleyball has tallied three straight losses in the last week. The Bengals opened up last weekend with a 3-2 conference win over Plattsburgh, but closed out the Suniac pool play weekend with losses to Oswego and New Paltz the following day. On Tuesday, Madai avenged the loss Buffalo State handed them earlier in the season, defeating the Bengals 3-1. Buffalo State heads to Ohio for a non-conference weekend facing John Carroll on Friday night and Hiram on Saturday afternoon. Reporting for Buffalo State Athletics, I'm Rebecca Coleman. Back to you, Jeff. Thank you, Becky. In our final segment, we're joined by men's soccer head coach Mark Howlett and junior transfer from Churchville, New York, Luke Pavone. Guys, welcome to the show. Before we start talking about the team success, which there's been quite a bit of this season, uh, I want to introduce Luke a little bit to our audience. Um, transferred last spring from Division I University of Massachusetts. Uh, to nobody's surprise, probably second in the SUNYAC this year in scoring. 10 goals, 23 points uh, in just 14 games. Your relationship with Luke didn't just begin last spring, though. Uh, talk a little bit about how you came to know Luke and, and ultimately how Luke chose to come to Buffalo State. Yeah, um, I, uh, when I was playing for Roberts Wesleyan College, uh, Luke's father was an assistant coach. Um, I uh, did my first year there and was really looking to stay in the summer and continue to um, play soccer and also um, do some coaching work and uh, didn't have a place to live. so. I, uh, I reached out to uh, the Pavones and uh, it all sort of worked out that they took me in. <laughs> of course, any high school at the time, they don't have rules, so, <laughs> so we were allowed to do that. So I actually lived with uh, his family for a couple of years and uh, sort of got a, uh, you know, the parents, mum and dad were like my parents and they were like my little brother or like an uncle. So it was, um, that's how we got to know each other at first and then it's just sort of flourished with his soccer career and going and supporting him as a high school player and a club player and uh, even once he got into college so it just uh, that's where it really blossomed. So Luke from your side he, he says maybe a big brother or an uncle two seasons at, at UMass what prompted the, the decision to come and play for Mark and, and join Buffalo State? Uh, well when I was thinking about transferring out of UMass I uh, kind of knew that he was the only coach that I wanted to play for at the time so it really wasn't a tough decision for me at all. The impact you've made already, again, 10 goals, 23 points in 14 games. Talk about the transition from Division One to Division Three. not necessarily the, the caliber of play even, just comparing the, the programs a little bit, not talking about a previous school, but, but how has Buffalo State met or exceeded your expectations? The program? Uh, I'd definitely say it exceeded my expectations. Uh, you know, a lot of people say Division One, Division Three. it's a huge fall off, but uh, it's really not coming here. It's been uh, everything I really wanted and everything I could have hoped for. And he's helped me out along the way since you know since he's lived with me. He's always been a huge role model for me. So it was like I said, an easy decision coming in and playing for him. And we're, we're lucky to have you. A, a great 
start to the season, although the season's <laughs> winding down actually. Nine three and two overall, three one and one in SUNYAC, one point out of second place in the conference, one win shy of the most wins that the program's had since 1984 for a season. Uh, besides uh, Luke's obvious impact, uh, what has gone well and what have been the strengths of, of this year's team? I just think the maturity levels. We were very young last year. I think then gaining an additional year from everybody that was here. Um, I think just the, the focus that they had going into the season. We had a very good off season, um, really putting the principles into into play and making sure everybody understood those fully. And I think just uh, again, just a concentration on what we do, not what anybody else does, but what we can do defensively, offensively, to make sure that we get results. Up almost a goal a game this year. Uh, I'm sorry, down almost a goal a game that we're conceding up almost half a goal a game. Um, is, it, is it just personnel or are there some, some fundamental changes we've made? I have noticed a, as an observer, playing a much more physical, tough brand of, of soccer mm -hmm. this year. Is that, is that intentional or is that just personal? Um, no, a, a bit of both. I think, um, you know, I, I recruit guys that really play on, on that line and uh, are going to give full effort both defensively and offensively. And I think we're seeing that now in the couple of rec recruiting cycles that we've had. But um, I just think it's, it's us trying to identify ourselves in the conference and uh, keeping up with the conference at, at that physical pace. And, uh, and then we've got guys that can change games as well. So we can match teams' intensities defensively, but I think we, where we're a little better is, is in personnel going forward. You talk about intensity. One of the more intense players I've seen at Buffalo State is, is, is sitting next to you. Um, talk about the style of play. There's a lot of talk about the style of play in SUNYAC, that it's a, it's a tough conference to play in. Um, do you agree with that, and does that style uh, agree with you uh, and your style of play? Yeah, you know, when I was younger, my dad would always tell me you got to be a little more physical, and watching him play in college, he's a, I don't know, not a lot of people have seen him play, but he was a real physical player, a real intense guy, so, you know, just growing up watching him play, kind of trying to mimic him a little bit, so, but yeah, the SUNY Conference is a real tough conference physically, so I enjoy it. I enjoy it a lot. A captain, even though he only transferred in last spring, um, what, do you, what do you see in Luke that is lent him to that role uh, so early in his career at Buffalo State? Just what he does, um, what the guys see him doing. He's the first one to pick up a cone or first one to, to go and grab a ball, um, clean up, carry things, just those little things. And I think then just his work ethic, both in training and in the game, he's, you know, he wants to be out there first, he wants to do more. And I think guys gravitate to that. Um, Obviously, the nature of which he plays in and the success he's had, people have seen that, and I think that that started right in the spring with his intensity, with the weight room and uh, with, with individual stuff. So I think that the guys just see him a, a, and really feed off that. Just over a minute left. Again, 9-3-2, and two, a great start to the season. Four regular season games left, all conference games, uh, two on the road in North Country this weekend. Uh, what, what needs to happen and, and where are you expecting this team, uh, where's the ceiling for this team? Um, to be quite honest, I'm not sure because, uh, you know, our goal was just to make sure we were in playoffs. It, the SUNYAC is very tough this year with a lot of teams beating some very good opponents early on and now it seems like everybody's beating each other up in conference. But um, it's making sure we're there first and then I think, you know, anybody's good enough to beat anybody on their day. So, you know, we're just trying to take one game at a time and that's been our message this year is just, you know, Friday's the most important right now and then we'll go from there. Just under a minute left, Luke. The locker room it, buying into that idea one game at a time, and, and what is your uh, goals moving forward for for the team for the rest of the you know, season? Like, like Coach said, we kind of just focus one game at a time. We we work towards the next game, whether it's what we're going to do specifically the next game or what we do in training. But the locker room has been great. So, well, well, guys, great go so far this year, but a, a lot of work left to do. North Country this weekend, Potsdam and Plattsburgh trip. Best of luck there, and. We'll talk again come playoff time. Uh, that'll do it for this edition of Bengal Magazine. Thanks, as always, to our great crew down here at Instructional Resources. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you again in two weeks for more Bengal Magazine.